My name is Niels van Horn, at NVH on Twitter and GitHub. Uh, I work at, in Amsterdam at a company called Framer. We make a code-based design tool. Uh, and this year, for the first time, I'm also organizing a conference. Uh, it's called Swift Island. It's on an actual island, and it's happening the month after WWDC. Um, so you'll be surrounded by nature. There will be no talks, but only workshops. So we'll get dive into the content announced at WWC. It's all inclusive, so your accommodation and uh, dinners are uh, being taken care of. And to explain a bit more, I've created this infographic. So we all know the excitement. We're around here. Um, that, that gets up to WWC, right? And then WWC starts, and that's a lot of fun. And then it ends, but then like your confusion kind of starts, right? Because you're re-watching the talks and trying to use these things. And it, well, that's why we created Swift Island, because at Swift Island, you actually get to use all these APIs. So um, uh, your confusion will go down, your excitement will go up again, and it's even more fun than WWC. Um, so, unfortunately, we have already been sold out, so <laughs> I've been giving this pitch for nothing, but we'll be probably be doing this again next year, so then I'll, uh, I hope you can all buy a ticket. Uh, and Roy is also uh, at our conference <laughs> giving a, a, a workshop. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to um, give a live coding talk right from my iPad, but I want to set some ground rules. Um, I'm not a robot, so uh, if you're like, hmm, I think I spot a bug, uh, don't be like, but just raise your hand and point it out to me and then we can fix it together. And if you're like, ah, or no, don't be shy and just, just shout it out and I can explain it a little bit more. Okay, let's get started. Um, so we're going to talk about ARKit today. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you two ways to use ARKit, uh, through SpriteKit, which is Apple's 2D uh, framework, and to SceneKit, which is Apple's 3D framework. Um, so here's some basic setup code, uh, where we first create an ARSK view, which means a, uh, augmented reality uh, scene kit, uh, uh, sprite kit view. Um, and then we create an instance of the delegate class that we define here. We set the delegate to that AR view. Uh, we create a scene. We present that scene, um, and then uh, here's some configuration uh, of the of ARKit itself and from Playgrounds uh, itself. Oh yeah, and here we have a tab gesture recognizer that uh, calls this uh, did tap view method, um, so we can do actually do something with it later. Um, so first, we are going to implement one of the uh, ARSK view delegate methods, um, which is called. Hey, Yeah, so my autocomplete wasn't working, um, uh, which is called a node for anchor. Um, and here we're going to uh, check if uh, the, the anchor that we get is actually a plain anchor. Anchor. Um, uh, so we're going to optionally cast it to uh, AR plane anchor. And if that's the case, we're going to return a uh, SK node, which is a SK label node, which can, we can conveniently pass some text, uh, which will be an emoji of a little flag in the ground. And if it's not a plane, then we will uh, return another SK, SK label node, uh, which will also contain some text, which is uh, a little pin. Um, so let's see how this works. Um, if I uh, excuse me for the, the the mess on this table, but otherwise ARKit wouldn't detect the table. Um, so here you can see that uh, ARKit added a node um, uh, and placed a SK label node at that uh, uh, node. So it, so it it detected the plane on this table. Um, so uh, uh, it it placed this emoji there, and you see. Um, that no matter how I turn uh, the iPad, the flag always stays 2D, right? And you can uh, even better see it if I place it on top, because then it starts like turning around uh, a bit. So SceneKit is just like a 2D um, a rendering inside this two, uh, 3D uh, ARKit uh, world. Um, so let's actually uh, write some code to add the pins as well. So when uh, I tap the view, I'm going to get the location uh, of that tap from the sender. So I say location in view sender.view. And then I'm going to do a hit test from 
a result uh, and, and get a result from that. So um, I uh, actually gonna call out to the AR view that I created um, on, on the bottom here. So in actual code, you probably wouldn't like use like some gl global static shared uh, uh, variable here, but like for now, this is fine. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a hit test on the point that, uh, uh, that we actually touch the uh, view on that location. Um, and what we want to hit test to is an existing plane. So ARKit detects planes for us. And with this hit test, we actually uh, uh, get the planes that ARKit already detected uh, for us. Uh, this is an array, so we're going to take the first item. Um, and then if we got a result from this, um, we're going to create a new anchor, an AR anchor. And we're going to put that at... at uh, transform, which is the uh, world transform of the results. Transform. Uh, so let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, it's if let, not. So there we go. Um, so now if I point it at the table again, it first detects this first uh, plane. And then if I touch it, it should, ah, it should add a pin but we haven't added this anchor to the scene so we need to say ar view dot uh, add uh, uh, ar view dot session add anchor and then uh, it will work so here it detects the plane again and puts a flag come on you can do it yeah there it is and then if I touch the, the screen, it will actually place uh, different pins on this table here. So, uh, and if you see, as you can see, if I move it around, these pins actually stay at the same, uh, same position. So now let's use a little bit of more of SceneKit and not just place this label at that specific position, but place it a little bit higher and then add physics to make it drop down. So for that, we're gonna, uh, add this to a variable called pin. Then we're gonna create a new variable called rect, which is an, another ASCII node, but the SK shape node, shape node, uh, which we are going to pass a rectangle, um, which is just a CG rect. Um, and this CG rect um, is gonna have an X of, uh, no wait, a Y of zero, a width of the, uh, width of the pin frame dot width, a height of 250, and the x is going to be minus the width, uh, the half of the width of the uh, pin. So frame dot width divided by 2. And then we're going to add this pin, uh, add this pin to the rect. Um, and we're actually going to return this rect. Um, so now we, we still need to place the pin on top. So we say pin dot uh, position um, is the uh, dot y is equal to the rect rect dot frame dot height minus the pin dot frame dot height. Um, and then uh, we, we added the pin on top of the rectangle, so now we need to add physics to make it drop down. So uh, we do that by adding uh, a physics body to uh, this node. So we say pin.physics body, and this is going to be oh, an SK physics body, uh, which is going to be uh, of a certain size. Oh, physics body. Uh, CG size is a rectangle of a size of that pin dot frame dot size with a CG point as its center, uh, which is going to be uh, zero, and the y is a pin dot dot frame dot width divided by two. And then we're gonna give the rect a physics body as well. Um, and to uh, collide the pin with the rect, we actually need like everything around that rectangle to be the physics body and the pin be inside of it. So there's a, spe a special physics body for that, uh, which is an edge loop. 
um, and we can create an edge loop from the CG rect, which is just the rect.frame. Um, so let's see if this works. Let's first detect the plane again. Yes. And if it detected it, I can touch the screen and you see that it creates this rectangle. And then on top of this rectangle, it, it, it places this pin and the pin collides with the, the rectangle um, uh, inside of it. But this is all 2D. So it looks like these pins are behind each other, right? So if I place one here, uh, then it looks like now this one is behind the other one. But as you can see, it, it, will, um, it will actually collide with the other edge loops that, that are there, right? So it will actually like, create a big, big mess uh, with this. Because this is just a 2D plane where all this is happening. Like that it is 3D is just Apple like positioning these, these things in, in a 3D um, uh, field. So we can actually fix this um, by telling uh, uh, SceneKit which node should collide with which node. We do this through a bit mask, so we create a variable called bit mask, which is a u in 32. Um, and then we set the uh, pin dot physics body dot uh, collision bit mask. We set it to that bit mask. And we set the pin dot physics body dot category bit mask, which is actually the bit mask that it should collide with. Um, we set it to that same bit mask. And then we do the same thing for the rectangle. So physics body uh, dot collision bit mask is that bit mask. And then the rect dot physics body dot category bit mask is that same bit mask. So this is for just one, but then we need to shift these bits to actually like have different bit masks for every uh, uh, pin that we add. So what we're going to do is we set the bit mask to that same bit mask, but we shift the bit by one. And then if that bit mask is uh, actually we shifted this bit out of the uh, the, the size of the 32-bit in integer, so if it becomes zero again, then we set the bit mask back, back to one. Um, so what will happen now is like after th I've added 32 pins, then the bit mask becomes zero, then it will be reset to one, and then uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll be adding like a uh, physics body with that same bit mask again. So if I added 32 pins, then the 30 uh, second uh, pin would collide with the first pin I added. So to avoid this, I'm gonna um, uh, get a dispatch queue. Um, and then do async after, and after uh, two seconds, I will actually uh, oh, two seconds. Um, I will set the physics bodies of these nodes. So the pin dot physics body, uh, I'll set it to nil, uh, and the rect dot physics body, I will set it to nil. Uh, so now, because the animation or like the the, the collision already happened. Um, I can safely remove these physics bodies because they are already at this position. Uh, the final thing I do, just to be sure, is set the pin dot location uh, position dot y to zero. Um, so let's see what's uh, here. Let's put Q this main. Can anybody see what's wrong here? This is the. I'm pretty sure that's correct, but um, let's try it again. Let's see what the autocomplete makes of it. Dispatch Q dot main dot async after. Yeah, that's the no, 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 no. I don't want that. Let's see. Maybe if it wants it wants it like this. Let me try again. Uh, so dot now. That's ah now is maybe yeah. is is also a function call. Sorry, that's what you were saying, right? Um, sorry. Yeah. 
So, yes, thank you very much. So let's uh, set the pin dot physics body. Come on, physics body to nil again, and then direct dot physics body to nil. Physics body to nil, and a pin dot location. Uh, pin dot position dot y to zero, and then I have this here. Yes, there we go. Uh, and then the last thing we'll do is we actually hide the rectangle, so we set the rectangle dot line width to zero. So we actually don't show it, we only use it for the physics bodies. So now, if it detects it, you can see that like I can place pins uh, next to each other, but I can also like place them on top of each other. And as long as I don't create 32 uh, pins in two seconds, then I'll be fine, right? So. And if I can move around this, you can see that it gets pretty close to the table here. Um, I think because the cables are on it, it's actually not on the table. Um, so that's how you create something with SceneKit um, and Sprite, or with SpriteKit, sorry. And now we'll move to SceneKit, which has actually a, a pretty similar API. So in SceneKit, we have uh, a function that tells us that we did add a node. Um, for a specific anchor. Um, and we do the same thing. We uh, check if that anchor that we have is, is a plane anchor. And then uh, we'll cast that to AR plane anchor. And uh, when we detect that, we actually create a new scene kit object, which is called a, a plane. Uh, but we still need to create that class. So let's do that. Uh, let's create a class called plane and it inherits from SCN node. Uh, we give it an initializer and call it super. Um, and then uh, we need to overwrite and we need to add another initializer for decoding. Um, and we add like some instance variables to it. We add a plane, which is uh, a geometry, which is an SCN box. Um, we add a plane node which is another SCN node that we'll use to uh, to show uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 object, and we'll define the plane height, which will be a float, uh, which is 0 0.1. Uh, all dimensions in SceneKit are measured in meters, so if I say that the plane height will be 0 0.1, it means it's 10 centimeters high. Um, so uh, uh, we're going to initialize these uh, these things. So we'll set the plane to SCN box. Um, let me see, to a width of one. The height is going to be the plane height, the length is one, and the chamfer radius is zero. Um, and then we're going to uh, create a plane node, which is an SCN node that takes this geometry. Um, and then in the end, we're going to add uh, that node as a child to ourselves. Uh, and here we need to cast the uh, float that we created to a CG float. Um, now we actually want to add some textures to this plane node. So we're going to add a function that we uh, call show. Uh, so let's write that. So we have a function called show, which takes one argument which says if it's visible, visible, um, which is a bool. And now we're going to create some materials to add to uh, uh, the, the node. Um, so we're going to create an array of materials, which is going to be an array repeating something for six times, we could, because we have six sides on the box. Um, and uh, we're going to actually create a, a little helper function that uh, uh, specifies um, uh, or that creates a material for us. Um, and in this case, we want a clear material. And then uh, we set those materials on the plane node. Plane node dot materials. Ah, I haven't created the function yet. That's why it's complaining. So let's create the function to create a material. So uh, it's just a little helper function that we... Mater material. 
um, that we give a contents that can be any and it returns an SCN material. Um, so we're going to create that. Um, and then we set its diffuse contents to whatever we pass to this function. Um, and we set the lighting model to physically based, uh, which gives us a nice uh, uh, lightning uh, based on the, the actual physics that we apply to these object, objects. So we return this material. Um, and now it should work. Ah different syntax there and now ah yeah it shouldn't be on the plane node but on the geometry so on the plane um, so now we still have this uh, visible parameter here we now created a clear uh, a clear box on every side so uh, if we actually set this visible to true we want the top of this box uh, we want it to have a different material and we want that to be a color uh, which is going to be like a nice oops, green kind of color that we give a little bit of alpha. Um, and then uh, the top of the box is uh, the fourth uh, or the fifth element in the array which has index four. Um, and then we set that to um, a material uh, for that color. So now we've uh, implemented the, the plane node, but we still need to position it. Oh yeah, this needs to be a far. Um, so let's uh, create a function that actually does that. So we update um, this, uh, uh, this node for a specific plane anchor, because it has a plane, plane anchor. And what we do there is um, uh, we actually set the dimensions of uh, the box. So we get the plane dot length and we set it to the anchor dot extent, which is um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, what ARKit thinks the extent of the plane that it detected is. So if you have this table, it has like these square dimensions um, and it will actually tell us the length of this, this size. So, uh, that, well, what it detected basically. Um, so we set the length to uh, the, uh, uh, the Z and then the plane dots. Uh, with, we set it to the anchor dot extend on the x-axis, um, and then we need to cast those, um, and then in uh, finally we'll uh, set the plane dot location, uh, plane node dot location, a oh, position. Sorry. Uh, we set it to an SCN vector, which is uh, the X is the position of that anchor, so the center position, center dot X. The Y is where it's positioned relative to uh, uh, the node, which is the uh, plane height, plane height, oh, plane height divided by two. I think it's minus plane height. Um, and then anchor.center.c. Um, and we probably need to cast that. Oh, I made a typo there. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. And now we want this plane to actually have a physics body. So we can set the plane node dot physics body to a new SCN physics body that we create with a shape. Uh, so we f let me first create that shape. Oh. Let shape is an SCN shape with a specific geometry. Ah, SCN physics shape with a geometry, which is the geometry that we just created, the plane. Um, and then we create a physics body that will have uh, a static type because the, uh, the, the uh, plane will not move uh, static uh, with this shape. So now with all these groundwork set up, 
we can actually uh, call this on the plane. So we update this for the uh, plane anchor that we have. And we actually add the plane to the uh, node that we get from uh, uh, ARKit. So we add that plane. So let's see if this works. So now it should detect a plane and then show us a green O. Oh, did we call the show method? Yes. Uh, we added a child, yes. Yeah, so there it is. So it detected a, a plane and it tries to uh, uh, put it at the same position and I think I placed it too high, yes. Um, but it doesn't, like, it, it detects multiple planes but it doesn't update them. So there's a different method in ARKit that basically uh, tells you when a plane or an anchor basically has updated. Um, uh, and that is uh, similar to did add, it's only called did update. Um, so here we can check if the anchor is a plane anchor again. Um, and then we want the, the plane, right? But where do we get it from? Well, we need to store it in our own uh, array. So let's create that. Let's create a, a dictionary actually um, of planes, which will have an AR plane anchor uh, as a key and a plane as the value um, and initialize that with an empty array or an empty dictionary. Um, and then we'll uh, add that to the planes, uh, add the existing, existing plane to the planes. Uh, so the plane anchor. And here uh, we have that plane and the only thing we need to do is then call the update function that we just wrote on it. Plane dot update. So what's wrong? Flat, yeah. This is fine. Uh, for plane anchor. Yes. So now when it detects a plane, it will actually extend that plane to uh, uh, the different uh, the, the, when it when I move it around and it uh, ARKit detects that the table was actually different than it uh, expected it, then we'll send this update method and we'll actually detect it. Um, so I think I still placed it too high. I'm not sure. Maybe it will. no, 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 this is correct. Okay. Um, so now we have like a, a, a physics a, a physical structure in SceneKit where we have like a physical structure in the real world. So now we can actually add something to, to, the, um, uh, uh, to the scene that, uh, that uses these physics. So this will go in the same way as the, um, uh, the sprite kit one. Uh, we will first get the location uh, from the sender. Location in view, sender.view. And then we get a result from a hit test on the AR view from this location. Uh, and we want the existing planes again. We take the first from, from that. And then we are going to create a sphere. Um, and that's actually a sphere class that I'm not gonna write like the plane, but just copy paste from here. So it's pretty similar to uh, the, uh, the plane class. We have an initializer method that actually creates a sphere with a specific radius. Um, it adds like a nice red color to it um, and then creates a physics shapes and a physics body from uh, uh, that, that same uh, geometry. Um, but this physics body is dynamic, so it will actually move if we apply forces to it. And then we have a little helper method to position it at a specific uh, place. So now we created this sphere and we're gonna uh, position it. Position, come on. Position it at the results.world transform, which is the location where the hit test uh, comes from. And then uh, we have the position, we, we need to adjust it because it's actually the place on the plane, but we have a sphere and other, otherwise it would be placed inside of the table. So we need to it on top of the table. So we uh, actually say position dot y uh, plus is the sphere dot radius. 
And then we add that to the root node of the AR view. Uh, scene dot root node dot add child node. Um, and then we add that sphere. So let's see if that works. So first it detects the table. And then I can add like these nice balls to it. And I, if I place them basically inside of each other, then they will actually start rolling over this plane. So this is pretty nice already, but let's add some, some other uh, physics to it. Let's, uh, uh, um, let's make us able to tap the balls and then apply some force to that balls. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to do that here um, in the did tap view. I'm going to uh, do another hit test, and this is going to be a hit test on the same AR view, but a different uh, uh, method signature. So here we have the method signature that, that says uh, hit test uh, with a location and the types existing planes. This is the AR kit one, but now we're going to use the, the scene kit one. Um, so that is this one, uh, which has options. So they are pretty similar, but the difference is that uh, uh, this one is going to hit test in the, the real world as Apple detected it through ARKit. And this one is going to hit test in the virtual world that I set up on top of that. So it's going to hit test my plane and my spheres um, on that. So I'll uh, add them or I get them on the same location um, with, I think, an empty array as options. I get the first one again. And then what I'm going to do, going to do let's see if this is correct. It's a dictionary. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I get the local transform from this hit test. So, oh no, no wait. What I'm first going to do um, is get see if the thing I actually hit is a sphere. So uh, we are going to set the result dot node, which is the actual node that that in scene kit that we hit. We're trying to cast that as a sphere. Uh, so now I know that the, 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 the thing I actually hit is a sphere. And then we have a vector uh, which is called the local normal, which is like um, uh, the vector going into uh, or go coming out of the, the point that we actually hit the, 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 um, the, the plane of the ball. So uh, if, if we hit it right here, the vector would go like right out, but if we hit it here, it would go upward. So it's, it's like basically the, 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 the direction that, we, uh, that the ball is facing uh, when we hit it. We're going to inverse it because the vector is going outward and we want the force to go inward. Um, and we're going to multiply it by two just to give it a little bit, a little bit more kick. Um, so that's the force that we're using. And then we are going to take that sphere um, and we're going to uh, take its physics body and apply, apply force to that um, as an impulse because we want it only once uh, to happen. And if we don't hit a sphere, then else we're going to add a new ball or a new sphere. So let's see if this works. Let's first detect the plane and then I'm going to add a ball. All these weird um, uh, uh, lines that you see going through it, those are debug options that show the physics body uh, of the um, uh, of scene kit. So now if I tap the ball, it will actually like move out of the way. Um, and if I create multiple balls, then I can actually play a little bit of pool. So, let's. and this is really nice because it gives you like a natural interface to actually uh, hit the ball at a specific place. So if I tap it on, well, if I tap it on the bottom a bit, then it will actually make a, a little jump. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. Um, so. Um, as a last thing that we can do is instead of all have red balls, we're going to create an image iterator, um, which is a class that I already created uh, in this playground. I'll put this code on GitHub so you can take a look at how that works later. Um, and then let's disable the uh, debug options. Where is it? There. And now you can see I've built myself 
a small pool game. So this is showing like how quickly you can build something interesting with ARKit. Of course, it doesn't have borders, it doesn't have holes. Like you, you can always uh, extend on, upon it, but it shows like uh, uh, how you can really simple create something uh, uh, with physics and uh, and ARKit and SyncKit. So thank you very much. Wow, thank you very much for a <laughs> super cool, cool demo and talk. Uh, I've actually never seen anybody code uh, on an iPad even before. Like, yeah. even that was impressive. <laughs> All right, nice. so do we have any questions for Niels? Yes. Hi, um, actually, my question builds on what. Alec just said, uh, mm -hmm. how was your experience with, uh, with uh, Swift Playgrounds on iPad? Because on Mac, it barely works. <laughs> it has improved in the last years. I, I don't know when you tried it last in, uh, on a Mac, but like, I, I would assume or I would suggest you, you, would, try it, you would try it again. Um, I think this works really well because like uh, building ARKit, there's no way to build tests or to to like actually re restart a session where you're at, right? You're always like playing and you always needed to to detect stuff. So did this this worked really well. I actually like with a keyboard, Playground is a really nice IDE. It's it's really really well done. There's a there's a few like things that I don't like about it. Like if you have um, uh, if you auto complete something. Um, uh, so here, uh, with some, with, yeah. So here, I, I auto completed two uh, a function with two arguments, and then if I, for example, this point, um, I want to uh, like auto complete the CG rect, and I press tab, I don't uh, go into the auto completion of CD rect, but I go into the next node. So th th these are like tiny, tiny, tiny annoyances. But of course, it's still a touch screen, right? So I can still tap this one. Oh yeah. Ah, fuck. Yeah. Well, um, I can still tap it, and then then it will work. So so um, uh, uh, that's really nice. I, I use it sometimes just to just for fun, like in a plane, just to for some some coding on a on a small small environment. Um, without a keyboard, it's 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 hard. Like you can uh, just code with it uh, using the autocomplete, right? So you can basically say let's, and then I have a name, okay, and then uh, I need to bring up the keyboard. Which, which it won't now. Uh, so let's say uh, test, and then I can assign it uh, some value. And like, um, come on. Um, then I uh, I get the autocomplete for that value here, right? So and then I can say dot, and then I advance by some other value. And then if you tap those value, you actually get a nice interface of like increasing those. So you can do it without a keyboard, but it's like it's just for playing around and not for actual coding. Uh, what I do with with Xcode playgrounds a lot is just copy paste the whole view controller in that, and then just or or just a few, and then just like start coding that up. Um, uh, because it, yeah, just in containment basically, um, and that that works really nicely if your code is nicely separated. <laughs> so yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. So we have a question over here. Yeah. My my question is about the IR kit. Uh, I'd mm -hmm. like to know if uh, it supports m multiple devices visualizing the same thing. Oh, so the question is if you can look at the same thing with AR kit with multiple devices through the same scene. E exactly. I don't think it does. Of course, you can, like, with communication, build up the same scene on both devices, which is not the same thing, but, like, you, you could do that. But I don't think there's, like, a, you can use, like, a separate, se separate iPad as a second camera, basically, for, exactly. for that. Yeah, no, not yet. Well, may maybe WWDC, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so. actually, uh, just on the topic, I think yeah. that, uh, that the Google's ARKit equivalent mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. announced that at I.O. Really? the other week. Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, cool. So maybe we'll see so, that. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll see it at the yeah. top. Any more yeah. questions for Niels? No? Cool. Nope. If you want to play around with this demo uh, later on, I'll just leave it here and you can just like, like pull, play a little bit of pool yourself. So that's nice. All right. Cool. So once again, thank you very much, Niels. No problem. Cool.